Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, let us see how to create interactive dashboards in Jupyter Notebook. Jupyter Notebook is not just for coding, it can also be used to build interactive dashboards. With interactive dashboards, you can visualize data dynamically, filter and explore data without rerunning the code, or create a user friendly experience without extra software. So, the library used to create dashboards in Jupyter Notebook include Plotly Dash that is used to build full featured dashboards. We can also use Panel to create widgets and layouts and we can use Voila to convert the Jupyter Notebooks into interactive apps. So let's get started. So the first step is to install the uh, required libraries before building a dashboard. So for that we need to write pip install dash Jupyter dash panel and voila so after installing the li required libraries then we need to import the libraries into the Jupyter notebook so for that we need to first import dash and then from dash we need to import dash html dash table dcc callback output input then we'll also import plotly.express as px and pandas as pd so the first step is to load the data set. So I'm creating a variable df in which I'm storing the data set px.data.gapminder. Then to initialize the app, we'll write app is equal to dash. Then we need to design the app layout. So for that, we'll write app.layout is equal to html.diff children. Uh, then this will be the title of uh, the dashboard, my first app with dash data or we can also just write it as interactive dashboard yes, we can write it as interactive dashboard then we'll have html.hr then we'll have dcc.radio items so we have imported the dcc module and dcc stands for dash core components so this module basically includes a graph component called dcc.graph which is used to render the interactive graphs and, we'll all, and we are also using plotly.express to build the interactive graphs. So the dcc.radio items in that we have uh, the options we have population, life expectancy and GDP per capita and currently we are setting the value as life expectancy and the ideas controls and radio item so we have like added the radio items component uh, directly above the data table and there are like three options population life expectancy and gdp per capita and both the radio items and the graph components were given id names uh, and these will be used by the callback to identify the components. Then we have the dash table in which we have data table. The data is from df to dict records page size 6 and then we are using dcc to graph to create the figure and, ag and again we are giving it uh, ideas, controls and graph. Now the next step is to add controls to build the interaction. So we are creating a callback so to work with the callback in dash app, we import the callback module and the two arguments commonly used within the callback that is the output and the input. So the output is component ID controls and graph over here. The component property is figure and then we have input as the controls and radio item from over here and the component property as value. So basically our input is the figure property and uh, then we are defining a function as def update graph call chosen and then figure we are creating a histogram px dot histogram we are uh, taking the data from this gapminder data set in the x axis we will have the continent in the y we will have the column chosen this is the, uh, the function and the histogram function is average so the callback functions argument the column chosen it refers to the component property of the input life expectancy so we are building a histogram chart inside the callback function we are assigning the chosen radio item to the y axis 
and this means that every time the user selects a new radio item the figure is rebuilt and the y axis of the figure is updated then we are writing return fig which means that we are returning the histogram at the end of the function so this assigns the histogram to the figure property of the dcc.graph thus displaying the figure in the app and to run the app we need to write if underscore underscore name underscore underscore is equal to is equal to underscore underscore main then app dot run and debug is true now let me run this so we can see that we have created an interactive dashboard and the figure is and the radio item is already chosen at life expectancy so we have a table in which we have the country column continent year life expectancy population gdp per capita the and we have other columns as well and then this is the histogram that we have created so in the y x axis we have the continent in the y axis we have average of life expectancy so we have like continent asia with average life expectancy is 60 then in europe it is 71.9 let me say it 72 then in africa it is 48.86 americas and oceania so we what we can do is over here if we change the radio item to population now let us see what gets changed here yeah. so we can see the x axis remains the same as continent but in the y axis earlier it was average of life expectancy and now we have average of population so we have we can see that asia has the highest average population followed by americas europe africa and oceania so we see that instead of just population we are getting average of population because over here we had chosen the history function as average then now let us also see the gdp per capita so the gdp per capita is highest for oceania followed by europe then asia americas and africa so this is how you can create an interactive dashboard using plotly function dash we can also use html and css to style this dashboard which we can see it late in the later videos so that's it for today's video now you can easily build and deploy interactive dashboards in jupyter notebook don't forget to like this video share it with your friends and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss an update see you in the next one